Hey party people, I hope I don't get cut off here. I am still here looking for solo games. I am over at Panacall Games booth. Uh, we're gonna be checking out some cool stuff here. Shovel Knight, and uh, what's the other one? I keep okay, Barnacle Bay, that's right. I keep, <laughs> I keep calling it like Colt Bay, but Barnacle Bay. We're gonna be looking at both of them today, but first we're gonna start with Barnacle Bay. Take it away, I'm over here with two of the people who are what very, up? very much responsible for this game happening. Yeah, how's it going, guys? All right, tell us a little bit about, about the game, but also just tell us a little bit about Panicle. I, you know, I really honestly did not know who you guys were. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, maybe let people know who you are. A yeah. little background on us. Uh, we've both been kind of industry behind the current industry people right. for a long time. Right. I was with Cool Money or Not for several years. Yes. Heath was doing art for a lot of different companies for several years. Okay. Um, for a while, I had my own little uh, video production company called Eldritch Studios. And then Heath started his own little miniature line called uh, Red Panda Miniatures. So then we took uh, Eldritch Panda, combined them together. Panda Cult Games. Panda Cult Games. Oh, how cute. I yeah. know. We're adorable. Oh, We're adorable. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah, but uh, part, of that, part of that miniature line that we did was a bunch of animal adventurers in armor called Wander. It was just okay. a fun idea I had back in college and then finally figured out I have enough models and I have enough designs, you know, I can start a miniature line from it. And Jonathan started looking at me and he was like, we can turn it into a game. And the number one question I got from it was, where's the game, where's the game, where's the game, where's the game? And I was like, oh, we're making a game. We're making a game. We're doing it. And this. we made Panicle Games. And that game is Wander the Cult of Barnacle Bay. Uh, Barnacle Bay was a peaceful fishing village until the evil cult leader, Elder Bane, took over the town. He used his dark magic to corrupt the inhabitants of the city. The once peaceful otter fishermen are now crab-armed crazed otter grunts. We've got tentacle bunny zealots, fish bat casters, and worst of all, berserking bear sharks. We are playing as the heroes from the Wanderers Guild, working together to save Barnacle Bay, this one to five player, completely co-op dungeon crawler with a choose your own adventure campaign book. Oh, really? With 24 scenarios already loaded to go what? in the core games. Yep. In each of those scenarios, what? as soon as you beat them, it gives you a choice of which direction you want to go in. So the story oh. actually flows in a new direction. So every time you play through the campaign, it could be a completely different situation. Wow. So, so you're looking at some of the heroes. We have Tank, the Turtle Guardian. Show his model yeah. off right here with him. Okay. He's one of the crowd favorites. Tank, the Turtle Guardian. Other characters we have, such as Finn, the Wolf Ranger. My, one of my personal favorites, throw his hero card up here, is Ibexis, the Grumpy Goat Wizard. Okay. The model came out so great, you just see like his... His models are insane. Yeah. We've also got Roland, the Red Panda Warrior as well. Well, we, who we don't have on the table currently is... We have uh, Kira, the Squirrel Thief. She's on the other demo oh, table currently. Oh, cool. that's me right there. I like uh, the thieves, man, the thieves. Okay, so how does this work? All right, so the beginning of the game, uh, we shuffle our initiative board. This dictates the turn order. And hold on one second. Everybody, if you have questions, go ahead and leave them in the chat. I'll try to answer them as we go along. I see some of you guys are in here. You may have questions, so go ahead. All right, so the first thing we do is we shuffle our initiative board. This dictates the turn order of the encounter. But another also dictates the bonuses each person's getting depending on where they are on the initiative. So whoever's in spot one is also getting plus one defense. Who's ever in spot two is getting plus one attack, plus one movement, and so forth. So there's some of the examples of how the initiative board works. So we would see Tank would be going first. So Tank would have, starting the beginning of the game, he'd have two actions. Everyone starts with two actions in the beginning of the game, such as movement, attacking, and so forth. These dark squares on the board are darkness tiles. They represent Elder Bane's dark magic shrouding the city. You can't see through them until they enter them. So Tank has an option if he'd like to jump into the darkness or go around and punch that grunt in the face. Oh. I'm going to go around and punch that grunt in the face. Okay. So I'm going to one action to move two spaces. Okay. And then I'm going to attack the grunt. I'm going to look at my weapon on Tank, which is his hammer, which says three. We need to grab three dice. Yeah. Looking for axes because it's a melee weapon. I got Ooh. two axes. Ooh. The grunt has an automatic defense of one, so you'd block one of them, and I would have done one damage to him. Okay, so, oh, okay, so this is the enemy's... Enemy stat cards. Okay. One thing I wanted to be sure of, I, I never liked it in co-op games or uh, where you had to roll against your friends. I felt like that broke the immersion. Okay. So you only roll your dice for your character. You're never rolling for the enemies. Okay. The enemies do not need your help to win. The okay. game is plenty capable of taking you out on its own. Okay. So everything's fully automated with enemies keeping it very fast paced. Okay, what are these? So these are darkness tiles. So let's say Roland jumped in the darkness, we don't know what's inside, and oh, he so found some treasure. Past. Okay. And then it cleared the way and it opened the line of sight. 
So if you got some treasure, uh, the items of this game are very powerful and very unique. So Roland would have gotten the flintlock pistol. Okay. There's over a hundred item cards in this game. None of them are duplicates. Okay. There, are, there are no duplicates in this game. So for example, Roland found the flintlock pistol. That's the only one in this game. With over hundreds of item cards, you're never going to find the same thing twice. And no one's ever going to be running around with the same gear, the same sword, same helmet. Oh, so you get little buff stuff like armor. So, um, do you upgrade? I'm sorry, you upgrade. So your whenever you take, there's two forms of progression. So we'll use Roland as an example here. Uh, whenever you're t t uh, defeating enemies, you're going to be getting experience on this tracker down here. Yeah. And once you get to level two, you'd get plus one action. Okay. And level three, you're going to get new abilities. Oh, so you like get to choose order. which one. Yeah. So level one, right at the beginning of the game, you have choices to make if you want to be more offensive or defensive. Yes. Then at level three, you're going to get more abilities and so forth. This side of the dashboard is your short-term progression within one scenario. Okay. And this side of the board is where all your equipment um, will carry over from mission to mission, okay. which will be long-term progression from your entire campaign. Okay. So whenever you start a new campaign, you're actually going to be resetting your experience back to zero, allowing you to try new abilities and new builds with each mission. Some scenarios you may want to be more offensive. Some scenarios you may want to be more defensive. Okay. This intro scenario right here, the main the main point of it is you're just trying to find your way to this underground cultist den. The problem is is you cannot move from an above ground tile to an underground tile. Okay, okay. so this is underground. This is okay. underground okay. over here. Uh, you won't be able to find your way to it unless you take care of all the enemies and go underground. Are there other boards? There is nine double-sided large game tiles, oh, six double-sided wow. small game tiles. This is just the small demo. Normally there's multiple uh, large game tiles on a table. Oh. We're allowing you to go down below ground, come over one tile, come up above ground in another space. Whoa. So for example, just for this demo, let's say we move fast forward a little bit. We take care of a couple enemies. And let's say Tank jumped into this darkness space. Instead of treasure, this time he found an event. Events are another big story-driven element of this game. So Tank found an event, we draw an event card. He found Lady of the Puddle. You see a siren looking back at you through a magical puddle, check your knowledge. Tank is not the smartest turtle not of the, the group, so go. he only has a knowledge of two. All He's right. going to roll two dice, look, looking for successes. Come on. <laughs> he got a one. He got a one. So zero to two. Uh, you draw your weapons and attempt to attack a puddle, turning into a geyser of water, launching you into the air. You get knocked down and one suffer move. one wound. One yeah. If he would have rolled high, however, and been more intelligent, he could have uh, offered, t communicated with a siren and uh, gotten treasure out of it. So the events uh, can be good, can be bad. You don't know until what happens. Man. And not all events is always, it's not always good to be intelligent. Sometimes it's good to be dumb and impulsive because we've all played those role playing games yeah. where doing something silly gets in your way. Uh, one example is you can encounter the town weirdo where he comes to you and burps and you don't know what to do. So you check your knowledge. If you roll too high about it and think, overthink it, you ask if he needs assistance, he gets offended and hits you and runs away. But if you're impulsive and silly and you burp back, He'll think you're complimenting him. He'll give you a health potion because every town's got a town weirdo. Yeah, this is really, really cool. So these event cards, there's over 70 of them in the game. You go Man. through, you go through an entire campaign, never seeing the same event twice. Yeah, making the just auto generating these own stories as you're playing. This game is loaded. It's very yeah. loaded. Man. And, and let's say so we got past these encounters. Yeah. Now we get to this ladder token, allowing us to actually get underground. Once we get to the ladder token, we will then find the second Ooh. encounter underground, allowing us to connect to the other other underground tile. Oh, so now you're under here. That's it. So you'd start under. here. Right. The campaign book oh. will show you where the new where, you where the sp swamp points would go, okay. where the darkness would go, okay. and so forth. Bigger scenarios will have, like for example, you could be on one above ground tile, go underground and find this underground labyrinth to come above ground someplace else. Heath is actually Whoa. grabbing a campaign book to show you kind of the size of okay. how some of the other things look. So this is a general breakdown of how the actual campaign book will look, and this is just one of 24 campaigns we actually have in the game. So for example, this is a whole unique one where you're actually chasing an otter around the board. If he makes it to the objective before you, he floods the town and everyone goes down. Do you have an otter mini, by the way? That'd oh awesome. yeah, we absolutely have you an otter. You have an otter. <laughs> Yeah, so just a couple of examples of some of the amazing scenarios we've been able to put together for this. This um, is so cool. Yeah, the one was called, like my uh, one of my favorite scenarios is called Baby Bear Shark Boogie, where a baby bear shark ate a magic amulet, and you're gonna have to carry it through the scenario to unlock the magic gate at the end. But you're gonna have to be rolling defense checks the entire time because the baby bear shark's trying to get away. 
<laughs> so it's kind of like playing a hot potato with this bear shark. And if you drop it, it can run to a spawn point, disappear, and the scenario ends. There's yep. multiple ways you can lose. The game, if you do not work together, it can come back and bite you in the butt. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is uh, Geek and Sundry called us one of the most anticipated games of 2019. Yeah. And they said, uh, what happens if you take uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, Disney Zootopia, and Dark Souls? is you get Barnacle Bay. Right. And that's probably my favorite quote because those are all wow, things I very much love. Talk. That's a really and that, that, I, didn't, I didn't say yeah, this. Yeah, that's, well, that's good big yeah, this, this, good this, was, big this was written by Geek and Sundry, yeah. and I'm, I'm, it was amazing. Yeah, well, uh, stay tuned for more stuff from Jumbo I Plays Games, but thank you so, for showing Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank we're you gonna guys. go We're gonna go back live in a couple minutes with, uh, we're gonna go back with Paige, I mean, Shovel Knight. You're going to love this. I already see the minis over here. They look ridiculous. <laughs> We try. I'm, I'm really excited about this. Stay tuned. Very, very soon. I'm going to go over here, wait for this demo to end, and we're going to go back live. Take, take care, party people. This is Jerry from Jumbo Live Plays Games. Oh, Brody's excited, too, about this, too. <laughs> All, right, yeah. All right. I'll be right back.